Good afternoon. Hi, this is Wes McMurtry with Go Engineer. I'm an application engineer uh, that works out of the uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma office. And today I would like to uh, talk about using SolidWorks and use SolidWorks CAM and using configurations inside of SolidWorks to program parts. So, as you can see on our first screen right here on my PowerPoint, uh, this kind of the topic today is really kind of a, a revised setup that we're going to be looking at using uh, an individual part to machine that requires multiple setups. And in that, we'll be using uh, multiple SOLIDWORKS configurations to set this up and also using SOLIDWORKS configurations uh, to set up our stock for the programming side of it and also the simulation side of it. Uh, but, but before we get started, a little bit about who we are and where we're at with Go Engineer. Uh, as you can see here, we have a map of, uh, of the different offices that we have spread out over the, the U.S. And uh, so uh, quite a few offices there, high likelihood that we're going to be close by if you have questions or, or need us for, for anything at all. Um, feel free to, to get in touch with with any, any, anyone here at Go Engineer, we'll be more than happy to help you out. So for today's discussion, our, our goal um, would be to, to, tr to go over and cover uh, using SOLIDWORKS configurations and selecting multiple parts to machine. Another topic we're going to discuss uh, would be using SOLIDWORKS configurations to set the individual stops. Now, uh, the great thing about SOLIDWORKS CAM and SOLIDWORKS CAM Professional is what we'll really be working out of today is, is, the, is, is the ease of use and the power behind using SOLIDWORKS configurations to set up our machining parameters. So this is a very, very nice tool to have the power of SOLIDWORKS working in tandem with SOLIDWORKS CAM. Uh, we'll be setting up individual part setups. So we'll have three, three part setups for this particular uh, uh, model that we're working on and also in that creating multiple work offsets. So let's go ahead and jump on in. All right, so we see uh, over here in our SOLIDWORKS now, um, we have essentially a, a vice, three vice setup. We have a component here that has been set up in different fixturing so that we can run through the manufacturing process of each step. Uh, since uh, I've kind of decided just to use a three axis vertical mill setup for this, uh, I'll be turning the part according to how I need to set this up so that it can reach each of the areas of, that need to be machined. Uh, the first thing I'd like to talk a, bit, a little bit about is what we're actually talking when we're, when we're, when we're mentioning SOLIDWORKS configurations. This part has, has been designed in SOLIDWORKS. So let's, let's go take a look at, at this model. I'm gonna go, we're gonna go open this up and take a look at what's, what's actually taking place here. So I've spent some time already up front Designing the part, well, I didn't actually design the part. This is one of our library parts that we have. Um, but I did go in and create some, some configurations based off of that part there. So what we're seeing right here is a configuration uh, that, I've, that I've named Rod Slot Setup. So this will be the first uh, of a series of machining operations that we'll do. So I'll, basically, essentially, we're going to, to mail out these features that we see right here. Now, in that, I've also created a stock configuration, or what I've called a rod stock configuration. So I double click on that. This is going to be the stock that we actually mill away to create the rod set setup. So once the stock has been introduced into the setup, the machine will know what we've, what we've defined as, as our known stock. And then so on and so on. I have a couple some, some other configurations here. I have one called a wrist pin hole setup. You can see here. Uh, now I have a couple of holes here that for our second setup that we're going to run through. 
will be milling out or drilling out those holes. And then for my stock for that setup, you can see here uh, that I have the, the configuration set. So this, this is known that it's already been machined and I'm still awaiting uh, to, to, to drill out the hole for this setup. And then the same goes for the porthole setup. I have a little feature over here with a flat on it and a drilled hole as well. And then my porthole stock, you can see. So we'll be using all of these configurations in our, uh, in our uh, setup to, to machine. So let me go back over here. Back to our assembly. So in inside when an assembly in, in SolidWorks CAM Professional, when you're in the assembly mode, you'll see something a little different. If you're used to only programming with parts, single or individual parts, uh, you don't necessarily, you don't have to have this, uh, what's called a part manager. But when you're inside an assembly and uh, wanting to work inside that level, uh, a part manager allows you to assign what is actually a part. So we have here tons of things that could technically be parts, right? So we need to go in and select the things that we want to be considered a part. So I'm going to come up here and double click on part manager. And from here, I'll go in and start selecting my components that I want to machine. So uh, I have to be kind of careful. It looks like I'm selected there. That's okay. I'm just going to come over here and right click on this or just select it and press delete. We'll get rid of that. And maybe angle this a little differently. Here's my first component. You can see now uh, piston config rod slot setup just like we've seen a second ago. And I'll come over and select my next component or I could just come up and select this component and say add all instances. And there we go. Now you notice those instances all have their own separate configuration. So you can see, uh, as I mentioned, each of these parts have their own configuration. They're all the same part, but we have three different configurations here. So what I'm gonna do with this is uh, actually break this up and do what's called a split instance. This will allow me to set up individual work offsets and have a little finer de or little little finer control over uh, part programming and um, and um, as we go along you'll you'll see how this starts to play out here so uh, my first uh, part that I have here this rod set uh, rod slot setup I'm going to go in and I'm going to select on split instance and this will essentially allow me to create individual setups at, once we get to that this will all this will all start to pull together a little bit so I'm going to do the same on my next I'll split this instance and now I have three separate instances of this piston configuration so uh, just to get this in order a little bit find that one and I'll drag this one down I'm just left clicking and dragging on those and dropping them so that this makes a little more sense to me how this all lays out. This is not required, it's not uh, anything that has to be done or, or in order, but I kind of like everything to just be one, two, three, left to right, and kind of keeps me on, on track. So once I have this order set up, I'm gonna go ahead and say okay. And now we have our, our part manager now. We, we look below it, now we have each of these piston configs or these piston parts there as we as we select through there. So I have it uh, just like I selected in the part manager there and rearranged. Now that order is found here in this tree here as well. So the next thing I want to take a look at is, um, is the actual stock of these parts here. Now if I come down and I hover above the stock manager here, you can kind of see I get a preview of what it has the kind of the default setup for stock manager and what that's doing here. So each one of these have this predefined uh, stock that we want, but I, I don't I don't want this. I want this to change this up here. So this this is the beauty of SolidWorks configuration and being inside SolidWorks and, and using SolidWorks as a tool. If I come over to my stock manager now, 
I have multiple, multiple ways of, of setting up stop. But for today, what we're going to be looking at is using SolidWorks parts as our stock. So if I select there, it comes up and it's asking me to basic, essentially select a model from my assembly here that, that, I, that I would want to use as stock. So what I did ahead of time was I went ahead and set up a folder in my assembly tree out here so that I could pick from, easily choose which stock configuration I had. You can see here I have a stock and part configurations folder here. If I open that up, I have three of those configurations that we've seen earlier back at when we were looking at the part. Uh, so my first one here, you can notice each of these are hidden. This is just so that I don't I don't have to I don't have to try to fight or look through uh, the model to see what what I'm going here. So I have parts, uh, my parts actually my setups actually visible, and then all of my stocks are hidden here. But I'm going to select on this uh, first uh, configuration here. You can, now you notice we have piston config six there. So our our preview there for our stock now reflects the configuration that we've chosen there in SolidWorks for this particular stock. So I'll, I'm going to bring this down just a little bit here. And uh, it's essentially now we have our number of stocks here. We have our the first one that we've chosen here. And if I go in and select on my second part, you can see uh, our our stock that has been chosen is, is, is this kind of the default option here using a bounding box. But we'll do, we'll do the same as before. We'll go in and select on SolidWorks part. We're going to come back out and then the second configuration is right here. I'm going to select on it as my next operation. So you can notice now my stock has changed accordingly for this position. And I'm going to scroll down a little again. And again, we'll select the next or the third uh, porthole setup. You can notice now my bounding box is is uh, back to the default there but again we're going to choose SOLIDWORKS part and the next one in our folder here we'll select and now you notice our update there has been changed to that so now I have each of my stocks are a SOLIDWORKS part right there so we're, we're good with that we'll go ahead and say okay and we've just set up our stocks using SOLIDWORKS configurations to, to manage that for us. So, um, let's go take a quick look at our machine setup. Uh, I haven't really done much there as far as my machine. I just have a standard out of the box mill inch uh, setup with a vertical mill. I'm not being too cheesy about my tool crib or what tools we're going to use today. I'm just kind of taking a look now at my post processor just to make sure that we've got a suitable uh, post for what we're doing today. And once I've taken a look at that, we'll go ahead and say OK. So next, what we're really looking at now is the difference between when we're, when we're working with uh, programming parts versus programming assemblies or inside the assembly level is that we see we have a feature manager here. Now, in part level, we normally would just come down to coordinate system, right click, and we would have a mill part set up, and we would go from there. But when programming with assemblies, we do that from the feature manager level. So if I were to right click on feature manager, this is where I would find my insert mill part setup. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. And you notice now I have a mill, I have a different reference planes. Uh, and ways to select how I want to set this, this model up. But what I'm going to do is kind of zoom in on this area here <clears throat> and notice my default uh, orientation is coming from the side. That's not exactly what I want. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select on this top face of my part and orient this so that the spindle, this is essentially indicating that the, the spindle direction will be coming down and be perpendicular to to this face right here. So that's what we're wanting to see right here. That little arrow and the little crosshairs there, that's indicating the direction of travel from my, from my spindle. And I'll go ahead and say okay to that. So we've just essentially just defined um, <clears throat> a, a setup for this particular part. 
So I'm going to click on this and open this up here. Now we can see we have this mill part set up. This was just now created when we said OK. And so now I'm going to go and right click on this on mill part setup 10. And we'll go down and we're going to we're going to create a couple of two and a half axis features. A couple of pockets here is what we're going to work on here. Now, the nice thing about when you're inside in assembly mode, <clears throat> you can use sketches at the assembly level. So what I had did earlier, if I come down here a little bit, you can kind of see here if I at the very bottom down here, sketch one, I created this sketch inside the assembly level to use as geometry to cut this pocket out here. So, so a really nice way. And you can see right here, uh, I have uh, sketch one uh, being selected there. So this this is picking this up as potential as a potential area to create a pocket for our milling there. So uh, really nice feature there uh, inside SolidWorks to be able to just create quick sketches uh, for for programming our parts. So I do need to go ahead and assign an end condition to this. And I'm going to, my strategy, I'm just going to change this to a rough strategy. We don't need to see a whole lot of tool paths or we're not concerned today about fine tuning our, uh, our tool paths for efficiency. We're, we're primarily focused on setup and using these in the stock configurations to set this up and use work offsets. So our end condition, I'm going to set this and change it to up to stock. And if I take a look at this, I can see my stock is going down to the other side of my stock. So I'm going to flip that direction. And so you can see now it's defined using the stock that I've chosen, the stock configuration to the top of that stock there. So another, another uh, thing about SolidWorks is, is setting this up. All, all very nice visual tools for seeing where you're at, how things are going to be programmed and, and where the tool will end up starting its or start its cut and end up at, at the at the correct Z level depth. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look at that. That looks fine. We'll go ahead and say OK to this. And now we should have a rectangular pockets. What what this has decided that this will be. So we need a couple. We need a we we need to finish this up. So I'm going to go back now to my mill part setup 10. Right click on it. And we're going to go and select two and a half axis feature. And again, we'll use our pocket type. And instead of using a sketch or geometry, I'm just going to come in and select the bottom faces of these pockets to select each of those. You can see here we have those selected, our selected entities down here. Now we'll go choose our end condition. And again, I'll just choose a rough strategy. And this time I'm just going to select this top face as the to define the top and bottom of these pockets that we're going to mill out. And we'll say OK to that. So now we've we've essentially built our first part using a rectangular pocket and then several irregular pockets, which is what these were considered irregular pockets. Now if I scroll down here and look down here towards the bottom, we have a thing called setup one. This is where everything is going to be placed at uh, as we program each individual component. And then once we have all of our programming done for each component, all these will be placed into the setup one. But then we're going to assign different setups uh, so that these will get broken up. Essentially, we're going to break the link between each of these so that they will be their own separate um, entity. So let's let's move on. Uh, we're going to go to the next part here. Uh, and just like before, I'm going to go ahead and close this back up. We don't need to see that anymore. Our next part, you can see here if I select that, that's highlighted there. So there's no confusion as to which part we're getting ready to, to program. So just like before, I'm going to right click on Feature Manager. We'll insert middle part setup and come in and verify that that, that uh, arrow is pointing in the right direction. It is. All we're doing here is we're going to drill out this hole. So we'll say OK to that. And again, we'll, we will right click on mill part setup 11 and go to two and a half axis feature. And this time, instead of pocket, we're going to use a hole for our 
type of operation. And I may need to zoom in just a little bit. I'll select this inside face. You can see here our selected entities with this uh, CW face 10. And our end condition will be, I'm gonna just leave this set to bind and I'm gonna set this to 3.2 inches. Uh, I know that the diameter of this uh, part is three inches. So I know if I go just past that quite a bit, give it pretty generous, so past the, the edge depth there, uh, I'll be okay. And we'll say okay to that. So that'll essentially program or drill a hole through our part there at 3.2 inches deep. And we'll say okay to that. Now you notice we have a hole here in our setup. And then I, also down here, what I was mentioning earlier under setup one, we have all of our pockets and now we have this new additional hole there. Now these are all still in, contained in setup one and um, and that's okay. That's what we're looking for. And we'll keep on moving here. So feature manager, this part here, um, under there, we're gonna do the same as before. We'll right click here, insert the mill part setup, and we'll kind of zoom in on this. That's not the uh, that's not the angle I'm looking for. So I'm gonna select this face right here. I need my spindle to be perpendicular to that face. And we'll say okay to this. And we'll keep moving here. Uh, and open this up and right click and we're another two and a half axis feature. Now for this uh, particular feature, we're going to do an open profile on based on this edge right here. And then we'll also do a hole here. So uh, the first thing I want to do is program the open profile. And this open profile can be just an edge. And that's what we're going to do. I'm just going to select on this edge and then we'll go over to in condition and we'll just leave this set to finish and i'm going to set this to uh, instead of blind we're going to use up to stock you can see here when i did that it previews the stock that's being used for this part here now i need to reverse the direction you can see when i did that now i get this little red outline here that's essentially telling me this is the stock the side of the stock that i want to remove And one other thing that we want to take a look at here, you notice I've got this little arrow pointing right here. Well, that's the arrow that's indicating that the cutter path or the tool travel will come through to the left of this edge right here. So I need to change that so that it actually goes over to the right and, and actually contacts the face that we're wanting to remove there. So I'm going to go to edit feature profiles. Now you can kind of see this little arrow here. I'm going to use the flip direction to cut. I'm going to flip that over so now the cutter will travel or make its path through to the right side of this edge that we've selected for our open pro profile. And we're going to say OK to that. And OK again. We're all set up for that. And one more operation here. So we'll come back to Mill Part Setup 12, right click, and we're going to go two and a half axis feature. And we're going to change our from our type to a hole. So from hole, and then we'll come out and zoom in maybe a little bit here, select on this inside face. And for our in condition, I'm going to type in uh, 0.7 inches, which should get me through uh, this whole area here. You can kind of see here as I'm hanging on there, you can see this slot area here that's being kind of a silhouette edge or hidden edge there. So I've went through my area that I need to with that, with that particular hole by giving it a 0.7 inch depth. And we'll say okay to that. So the next thing that we're going to, to work on or look at is uh, so that now we, we've essentially, we've programmed our parts. Now we need to go in and under setup one, uh, we're going to generate our operation plan. So I'm going to right click on setup one and we're going to generate operation plan. And we'll let this run through this. And so now we've generated a, our operations and now we're ready to take a look at our, our tool path. So you can see 
uh, we were over in the uh, cam feature tree. Now, if I go back and take a look at this, all of those have changed. And now this, this uh, black, they're now all of these are lettered in black, indicating that they have been processed and it had went ahead and switched this over to the operation tree now. So we can see here we have our tool paths. So these tool paths still need to be generated uh, for each of our models here. Let me come out and zoom out just a little bit here to kind of uh, get an idea of what we're looking at here. You can kind of see as I start to hover over each of these um, what's uh, what each of these are, are doing there. So I'm going to right click on setup one inside this uh, inside the uh, tree that we're on right now and we're going to generate the toolpath. And now we can kind of see here again uh, all the different toolpaths that we have there. Now, these are all still contained inside setup one, which is fine if that's how you want to program the part. But today, what we really wanted to focus on is once we get to this point, what do I do next if I want to break this down into, into uh, using different work coordinates or using work offsets? You know, this is a three part or a single part with three that requires three setups. Uh, so, you know, this, this, all of this really goes hand in hand with what if this part had nine or 12 different setups? Uh, this, this is where using SolidWorks and SolidWorks CAM Professional really comes into play, being a great visual tool to set these up so that when you come back to these models, and if you ever, you know, say a week or a year later, you'll know exactly how these were set up originally, what each process was, and it's quick and easy, just a visual tool to see how how this thing was originally uh, set up to run. And um, you don't lose track of that. The other thing, too, is if, if I need to make a change or a design change or an iteration to anything, all of this has been uh, brought in. And if I need to make a change in a diameter or whatever it may be, all of this is updated automatically. So that's uh, a great thing. Um, so what I do need to do now with all of that said, well, we're going to go and we're going to create a couple of more setups here. So I can do that by just right clicking on setup one. And I'm going to tell it, tell SolidWorks CAM to split this setup. Essentially that, that is creating a, just, just a blank setup there. I'll do it again. Now I'm going to make three setups in total. So we'll right click again and we're going to split setup. So now we have group three and group two. Uh, just like before, I've got group one here, and I, I like to see things uh, organized. So I'm going to grab group three, left-click and drag it and drop it, so that now I have group one, group two, and group three. Not, not that it's anything required there, but I, I kind of I like to see things in one, two, three, four order. Uh, so we have our setup one here. Uh, what we'll do now is essentially come out, to set up one, and we're just going to grab the operations from this setup or what we want to create as our second setup right here. So center drill and drill are the two, two tool paths that we're looking for. So I'm going to select both of those and left click, and we're going to drag and just drop them on group two. And then again, we'll do the same process. We have a contour mill here over on this part, and then the center drill and the drill what we'll do is just left click and shift select those three and then I'm going to just drag those down and set those on setup one there. So now we we have uh, our, our different parts and our different tool pads all in their own setups. So one last step here on this or, or one thing that we need to remember is when we see these little icons here, these look like little little links and it, that's what this is representing these icons here we see group two group three these are all still linked to one another i want to take these and unlink those so to do that i'm going to right click on setup one and ask it to unlink setups so this unlink setups um, dialog pops up here and what i'm going to do is, is individually select those and then bring it over select my group three, select it, and then we're going to unlink those three groups from one another. Now, notice uh, our, our icons have changed. These are all now standalone setups that can be manipulated 
individually throughout our product program here. Uh, so what I'm going to do next is go into, and we're going to take a look at creating our work offset. So now that each of these setups have their own, uh, their own, basically their, their, their own individuality from one another, I can go in and I'm going to double click on setup one. And this is where I can go ahead and assign a work offset. Let me zoom in and out here so we can kind of see what we're doing. We'll use the setup origin and this was the original default, what it decided to make as a work coordinate. But if I wanted any other area or a vertice on, on my model or my fixture, I can click on an edge or a point there and I'll assign this corner as our work offset. So when I selected that using entity select, I'm able to select a vertice uh, to, to choose from there. So, and so next up, we're gonna take a look at our offset tab. And this is where I'm going to assign a work coordinate and we'll leave this one set to 54. And I'm going to just set this to zero for my increment. And you notice down here, I have one single part in here. And that's due to the fact that this part is its own setup. Now we're, we're working in the setup for this part here. So I only have one. I don't have all three in here. Had I not broke the link and unlinked these setups, I would, have, I would be seeing all three of these components in this list right here to assign. And I would have only had ability to really assign one work coordinate system to one of these here or potentially there's a, so today's method that we're using right now is is, is is just using unlinking the setups and creating their own core coordinates there so we'll we'll go ahead and assign this right here and you notice now our offset changed down here to g54 and we'll say okay to that and we'll need to regenerate our tool paths now our preview out here is indicating that we have a work coordinate on this corner that we set to our 54. We'll zoom out a little bit. We'll basically going to re watch and repeat this a couple of times. So group two, we'll double click. We'll go to origin, our origin tab, and I'm going to come out. Maybe I want the backside corner of this to be the area that I touch off on and set zero to. We'll go to our offset. We're going to use a work coordinate. I'll change this to G55 and set that to zero. And we're going to assign just like we did before down here. So this is key to always remember to click uh, assign to get this, uh, to populate this box down here. And we'll say okay to that. And we'll say yes again. And then again, down on group three, we'll double click again and back to our origin. And I'll zoom in a little bit to make this a little easier to choose. I'll choose this backside corner. We have our X going down this direction, our Y out, and our Z will be coming down. Same as the other components as well. And our offset, I'm going to assign my work coordinate, 56. And we'll say assign that. And you notice now we have that assigned. And we'll say OK. And yes, once again, to regenerate the tool paths. Now, at this point, we've taken a, a, a part and we've broken that part up or assembled it into multiple fixtures in, a, in an assembly. We've assigned SolidWorks configurations using or in the stock manager. And so now we've, we've essentially set up our part so that we can break this down into multiple work coordinates using multiple setups and using multiple stocks as configuration or configurations as our different stock cell. So, uh, notice as I kind of hover above each of these setups here, the changes from back and forth. So I'm kind of getting a preview there, a nice visual tool, how this thing is set. And this kind of goes back to all this just leading up to having the ability to visualize what's actually going on uh, in, a, in a model and what's, what's, uh, what's, um, what's desired in, in, in the process for, for creating our, our different tool paths. So uh, what we need to do next is we're almost ready to simulate this thing. Uh, but one thing I want to do is I'm going to add some fixtures into our simulation so that we can see uh, that we're clearing all of our, our fixtures, any clamps that we may have in a way. So uh, I'm going to just double click on setup one, group one, 
and I'm going to go up to my fixtures tab. So from my fixtures tab, this, this will allow me to come out onto the screen and select any components that I want to assign as a fixture. So I'm going to just select, start selecting on different components out here. You can see as I'm selecting these, it's starting to fill or populate each of these. So that's kind of the first three main components that I want to select as my fixture. I'll come down and, and just start working on some of the others here. And you can kind of see there, we're starting to build our fixture library. Again, select here, let me grab this, this, and these, and maybe even this bolt head here. So now we've got a list there of all the fixtures that we're going to see here in just a second. We'll go ahead and say okay to this. And next we're gonna take a look at what we've actually uh, programmed using our simulate toolpath. So I'm going to go ahead and click on simulate toolpath. This will take just a second. And you can see everything in gray that we see here. Those are the fixtures that we selected. That's the purpose of what we just did there. And then in the brass or gold colored, you can see our stocks that we have set up and uh, assigned as our stocks there. So, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and, and we're going to simulate this. I'm going to use so that it pauses at each of uh, each of our uh, and setups. We'll do setups here. So I'm going to turn this down just a little bit. Maybe zoom in a little bit. And we'll press our play button here. You can see our first rectangular pocket being cut that we use that we selected from a sketch. And as it comes in here, we'll speed this up a little bit. It's cutting out our irregular pockets. And I'll zoom in on this just a little bit, maybe. Let's speed it up just a little bit more. All right, so there's our first setup that, that, we, that we programmed. And next I'll go to the next setup or run. And you can see here, it went ahead and drilled, spot drilled and then drilled a hole. It happens kind of quick, but uh, let me slow this down for the next one here. We'll go to our next, and we can see here our cutter coming in, making those cuts, and then a couple of holes there. Now, I immediately I see something a little strange here. Due to the fact that I used stock that was longer than the part, my tool has come in and did exactly what I wanted it to do, but it's going to leave some stock over here on my on my part. So great thing about looking at this and using uh, these stock setups the way that we have is I can quickly see that I need to modify my tool path. So I'm going to go ahead and say OK to this. So a quick way to, to modify this would just simply would be to modify the tool. I don't necessarily have to go back through the entire process and delete the operation. I can go in and just simply with this particular instance, I'm going to modify uh, my tool that, that we use to create this, uh, this tool path here. And if I zoom in on this a little bit, I get a preview of the tool that we used. And can, we can see kind of the cutter and where the tool paths are at. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in and quickly change my mill tool from a half inch to an inch. And I'm also going to change my contour so that I'm going to come over. You notice where my tool path is at right now. It's over to the side of my profile. I'm going to tell it to essentially move over half an inch. And I'm going to do a quick preview of this. You can see now I'm using a larger tool. I've jumped up from a half inch to an inch, and I've also asked it to come over and start making a cut further over into the model by half an inch as well. So quick way to, to, to modify a tool path or, or an issue that you may have or run into. You don't necessarily always have to go back and redo everything. Just modify 
a quick customization of your toolpath, and we'll say OK to that. So now if I were to right click on setup one, I could go in and from there simulate the toolpath. So the, the difference between simulating from here versus what simulating from here is when I simulate from this group at this level, I can go in and only simulate or run through the whole process. So if you have a very extensive long program that needs to be cut, you can skip to different setups and skip over other areas of the model here. So I'm going to click on play. Okay. Removed all of that material there. Now you can see I've removed enough of the material to get away or to move the stock away from that, that part there. All right, I'm going to go ahead and say OK there. So another thing as well, uh, a quick way if you're ever curious about uh, how would I potentially maybe I want to do it put an optional stop in between each of the setups. Uh, if I right click on setup one, I could enter or include a, a um, post operation here. So if I click on post operation, uh, depending on the post processor you have, you have you may have more uh, columns here, more rows to select from, but we do have a, a program stop here. I can select on this drop down and select optional stop so that I'm basically essentially telling it when we post this program to post out an optional stop before it goes on and starts cutting the next um, operation. The same goes for here. If I right click and go to post operation, I have a choice here to do a full on stop or do a optional stop at that point there as well. So I'm going to insert that in there as well. Uh, that's what I had for the day. Uh, so remember, you know, using SOLIDWORKS and SOLIDWORKS CAM Professional, the way it's integrated uh, to work hand in hand and to build off of one another, it's just super powerful tool. Uh, I use this today as to represent really a kind of a way to set up visual, to visualize uh, parts that require multiple setups. Um, so hope you enjoyed uh, the model and the process that we used here. Um, let me go back here and we're going to take a look at our PowerPoint here real quick. Um, if uh, you have any questions um, about this webinar or would like to get in touch with Go Engineer, uh, don't forget that uh, to go to GoEngineer.com. Uh, and um, from there, you'll 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 see a lot of different links to a lot of different things. Uh, one being our SolidWorks training. Uh, we we do all kinds of training. Also, for on our YouTube channel, there are tons and tons, thousands, literally thousands of how-to videos and webinars like you've just seen today. Um, and again. My name's Wes McMurtry. There's my uh, you can be I can be found on LinkedIn, at, or my email is wmcmurtry at goengineer.com. I appreciate y'all joining in today, and we'll uh, see you next time. Thank you.